I don't know about you, Aaron, if this story is true. And it says basically that Dak Prescott was offered a contract of $30 million a year, and it would have made him the sixth highest quarterback in the NFL. And unless it was $30 million paid out in pistachio nuts and not in money, I don't know how in the world this guy could turn this down, only from this standpoint. On a lot of standpoints, but I, I get I get it. Is that every quarterback contract, Aaron, is what? Always always breaks the bank, breaks the record, goes up higher. So for him to take less than what Carson Wentz just got, right? He's supposed to get more than the last quarterback contract. That's the way that these guys are looking at it. I understand why he his people might have said, No, no, no. We're not getting that. I'm not giving the whole time hometown discount. I'm not doing any of that. Yeah, uh, and the latest report was that Jane Slater from uh, one of the re- one of the reporters who covers the Cowboys said that he is now looking in the forty million dollar price range. Which I'm just going to say it every show that I do, I think this is insanity. And I get that this is the quote unquote market for quarterbacks. You mean you mean just the the money, the type of money? Yes. Yeah, but the the league makes eleven billion dollars. Seriously, I I I don't begrudge. I wouldn't give him that, not because of the amount of the money per se. I don't think he's that good. That's what I'm saying. Okay, yeah. That, it's but but I don't begrudge anybody who can work themselves into that deal, considering what the league makes off of the play. Oh yeah, no, it's not a debate of whether the players as a whole should get more of the pie, but when you have a situation like the Cowboys where everything everything has been framed as like Zeke versus Dak, but. The bottom line with the Cowboys is is that we all know Amari Cooper needs a new contract. Jalen Smith, the Pro Bowl linebacker, is a restricted free agent at the end of this year. Byron Jones, the Pro Bowl cornerback, is an unrestricted free agent this year. That's the part that bothers me, Rob, is this idea that uh, that because he's the quarterback, he should get the... It's like, no, he's done nothing production-wise that makes him warrant this kind of money. We know that he's a product of that environment, a product of that system, a guy who needs all those puzzle pieces around him. And I think this is a guy. I, I know it's it's you know it's not cool to say that he should take less for the good of the team, but he needs all those guys around him to be but successful. But I'll never buy into that because I'm just not into you know that's for the front office to figure out when they're telling you you're saving money to help a billionaire. I'm just I, I'll never buy into it's that. Not whole, to help a billionaire. Yes, though. it is. It's not to because it's to help here's the team. No, but here's the argument. Tom Brady takes less, and then all they say is he does more with less than anybody else. Well, he doesn't have a star receiver because they don't spend the, the money Patriots, on it. Though. Well, but but I'm just saying, why am I why am I saving you money and you're not getting me help? Well, they would in theory. I mean, these are conversations that need to happen behind the scenes. But that's why I wouldn't do it. Is what I'm saying. You don't think that money's going to go to nope? Zeke? I don't. Nope. You don't think that money's going to go to Amari Cooper? I mean. The, the, the Cowboys are in a different situation than the Patriots because the, all the Cowboys' best players, not all of them, but most of them are young and on rookie contracts. And so that's where I see the problem is that all these other guys have to get paid. And I don't claim to be any type of capology expert, but when you want to take $40 million of that pie, you're not going to be able to sign all those guys, and you need those guys that's to not my That's not my issue. It is if you're Dak. No, well, well, Dak does need the other players that's, around him. That's what I'm but saying. I'm, but I'm not going to take less than my market value uh, as a quarterback because the team can't figure out. Spend mo- less money somewhere else. But this is the going rate of a franchise quarterback. I'm, I'm, I'm making the case for Dak only from the standpoint to say we've won two of the last three. You can say whichever way you want it. Two of the last three NFC East. I've won as many games as Tom Brady over the last three years. I, I would just lay out all the stuff. You could say, well, it's because well, of the running game and well, because it is. But I'm the quarterback. I would lay out that he went three and three without Zeke the, two four years four, ago. Right? No, three and three. It was a six game suspension without Zeke. But two I mean, years I, ago. Guess, I guess all of the games he's missed, he's four and four. So, same thing. Yeah. I, was, the, I got it. The, I know what you're saying. The, the year that they went, uh, that he was suspended for those six games. 
All the wins came against teams below 500. And then last year, he went 3-4 and four before they got Amari Cooper. So you can say, oh, well, it's because, uh, you know, I... Uh, 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 you know, I'm uh, we're, I'm winning all these games and statistically this and that, but it is because of the system that they've put him in and the product of the guys that he has around him. I think if you take Zeke off this team, we've seen what the record is. You don't have Amari Cooper. We've seen what the record is with all those but pieces. But that's not my concern. I, but I, why I, isn't it? You're, you're the quarterback. Because I don't have to go, what, take money from somebody else. But there's Get a pay, salary pay cap. Pay Amari Cooper le- less. Pay pay. Uh, you can't de- win without Amari Cooper. I, We've I'm, seen it. I understand, but I'm not. I'm telling you, I wouldn't be giving up the money. Okay. Because so you don't care about winning, then? No, I do. I just don't think that you don't have to do it on my back. You could do it off of take take money from everybody else. Same thing. Tom Brady's giving up money, but they don't spend money on players for him. I I just I don't buy into that whole notion that I should you have to your job as a general manager is to figure out how I'm going to divvy this money up. Yeah. You you know, you could say, well, well, you're not going to win. You know what? You know how I know a team won't win when they don't have a franchise quarterback. You need a franchise quarterback or an are alter we, or, or an unbelievable defense that's history making like, like in Baltimore. Are we positive that Dak is a franchise quarterback or I'm just not, that he has the tools around I'm, him? I'm not, but I'm just saying I would not discount my rate. So basically, they didn't tell me I'm filling in today with Dak's agent here on The Odd Couple, so that's really nice. Uh, I'm telling yeah. you that if I was the owner of the team, I would not pay Dak Prescott $30 I agree. million. Dollars. Yeah. But I, do, I disagree that he should concede when he sees all the other quarterbacks around. Matthew Stafford's making a ton of money and has, hasn't won a playoff game. Dak's yep. already won a playoff game. I could, You could look at Matthew Stafford alone I agree. and say he's making this – He's been in the league for a decade and hasn't won a playoff game. I agree. Matt Ryan is making all this. He won an MVP. He he went to a Super Bowl, choked it down, but he still went, and he's making this kind of money. All I'm saying is if I'm Dak, I wouldn't buy into the, this whole notion of helping other people because Aaron Rodgers got paid. All these other guys, they make concessions for these guys to pay them. Why not pay me? Yeah, they all got paid, but not at the scale that Dak did and certainly – I, I think that Dak is more reliant on other guys around him than all those other guys. I don't disagree. Yeah, and that's my that's my problem with this. I understand from Dak's perspective, go get your money. But here's the other thing that I don't I, I I mean I understand it right. We all want the most money we can possibly get from our contract, from our employers, whatever. But we've made such a big deal about Dak being on this low level, late round draft pick contract. If he goes up to Whatever they apparently offered him thirty million dollars a year, which was the report earlier today. That's life changing money. Why? Why do you have to be number one, number two, number three? If first of all, statistically, it doesn't warrant that, and two, you're getting paid. I can't even do the math on how much more you're getting paid from a, a couple hundred thousand a year to start your career to thirty million dollars. Only was difference the is you're only worth what someone's willing to pay you. Yeah. Let's be honest. How come a movie star makes $20 million for a picture and they work three months? Yeah. Nobody has a problem with that. I'm just saying, if I'm Dak and the going rate is guys making 35 or close to $40 million, why wouldn't I want that? That, that, that? that whole thing in the NBA is the same way. I mean, guys making $40 million. Uh, uh, John Wall's making insane. He's, is he that good? Now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna knock I wouldn't pay him, yeah. but I'm not gonna knock the guy for taking it. That's what the market dictates. They're not giving the money to John Wall because they like him. Mm-hmm. They're giving it because they're making that kind of money. And when you do the math and they have to give up fifty two percent of whatever the revenue is, that's what it comes to. Well, and the one and, and to use the NBA analogy really quick, there was one team that did something really interesting this offseason, which I was really uh, impressed by, and that was actually the Charlotte Hornets, who had that exact predicament with Kemba Walker. And they said, your contracts, you can earn up upwards of $40-plus plus million a year, but if we pay you $40 million a year, we can't win because we're not going to sign the players around you to get us to the highest well, level. Well, then you're not going to win. Uh, you, you, but that's, have... the, that's And that's where the Cowboys are. And there's are. no guarantee that if he takes less money, they're going to win anything. So no, that's the other part. I mean, they could sell you that. But but that a Kimba Walker in that situation, I just yeah. wouldn't buy into that. I think Dak I would, is the the NFL Kimba Walker. I just don't think he's worth that money. I'll be curious. I said I wouldn't pay him, but I'm not begrudging or sure. thinking that he shouldn't 
hold out for as much as he believes that the quarterback market is. I respect that part of him if he really believes he can get it and he has the Cowboys over a barrel. They have no other option. Jerry Jones' championship uh, clock is ticking, okay? He's not he's not getting any younger. Jerry has won two or three playoff games in the last 25 years, decades, yeah. still trying to prove to people that he knows how to run a football team, and he hasn't really won since Jimmy Johnson yeah. put the team together. So he's fight. I know he's in the Hall of Fame. I know he's got a rich franchise. But he deep down, he wants to win oh, yeah. again. Yeah. I don't disagree. I just uh, – I'm I'm on your side in the sense I don't blame Dak for asking the money for the money. I do think it's a little ridiculous, and I just wouldn't pay him. I would figure out another situation at quarterback before I would pay him forty million dollars a year that he's asking for. Daniel in Mississippi, you're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. What you got, Daniel? Wow, this is awesome, guys. Thanks for having me. But look, I think he's crazy as well, and here's why. Everybody, I'm sick of. Just like the whole Rogers Brady discussion when they you hold the rings over here in this corner and then you got talent in this court, it's a team stat when it comes to wins and losses. Because you look at Dallas last year, I would argue they had the best defense in the playoffs last year, and that's why they won the Seattle game. And Ezekiel Elliott had a great game as well. So, and Dak Prescott is what? He's one and two in the playoffs in the 2016. He couldn't even. He couldn't even throw the ball and dominate until the second half on the and when it was too late in Green Bay, my Packers. They got dominated by the Falcons the next week because their secondary is atrocious. Wow. Daniel, Daniel I mean, real quick, I see you're from Mississippi. Uh, are you a state fan or an Ole Miss fan? Ole Miss. So this isn't any now, this isn't any Ole Miss. Uh, I watched Dak beat my team a couple times. Bias here. Well, actually, we were two and one against Dak. But look, I I, I like Dak Prescott as a guy. He's a good guy. You know, but I can think of a similar quarterback that's a, a certain free agent that's a controversial topic right now that could fill in at Dallas for much cheaper. Well, I would think he'd be much cheaper than forty million dollars. That is a similar style to Dak Prescott. Uh, that, you know, that's been my I, argument too. Is that I think thanks, that, Dal. That, I think there's a lot of guys that if you we consider to be quote unquote bad quarterbacks, but if you put them in in the same spot with all the pieces that Dak has, the wide receiver, Jason Witten coming back, uh, Ezekiel Elliott, the defense, that there are guys that could be as productive in that spot that we don't consider to be good quarterbacks. No, I agree. That's what I'm saying. No, and and the issue too is I think most people just feel like everything has to be perfect. Like mm-hmm. he misses throws. Yes. He's ranked, I think last year, football focus. Is that the, 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 Pro the football focus. something like, yeah. I think he's ranked 26th. Yes. I mean, when you look at all those numbers, despite the wind, you go, I, what, wow. I think he's in the middle of the pack. 16th in touchdown passes last year, 15th in passing yards last right. year. That's, that's the middle of the pack. That's an average quarterback. Absolutely. What about John in California? You're on the odd couple. Fox Sports Radio. What's up, John? Hi, how are you? Doing great. Great. I've been listening to you guys now for a couple months. You guys are pretty good. Man, thank, thank you. you very much. We appreciate yeah. that. Hey, I, I don't know how this works, but how about if we do an incentive base with this contract? You, They've already offered him $30 million. If he throws over 4,000 yards, he gets a bonus. If he makes the playoffs, he gets a bonus. If he makes the Super Bowl, he gets a bonus. And then maybe every year give him a 1% raise if he makes the incentives. So then, in uh, five, John, five years, I wouldn't sign that deal that because that's not how they're paying everybody in the league, and you can't have it both ways. I, I I understand what you're trying to say, but I mean, uh, they're giving everybody else guaranteed a, uh, a bulk of guaranteed money, and there are no it's not incentive laden. How much do you think that Dak doing this right now, putting his foot down, is because he wants to get it done before the season? Because even he knows, I'm not as good as I've looked win loss wise the last couple of years. It could be his only yeah. time. There's a That's part a, of that, right? I think so. And uh, this is my chance. And and I, you know what? If I go in and play this year, uh, you know, for a play, and I'm not that good, where well, I'm gonna be in a bad spot. That's what I'm. Thinking. And that's what I'm saying. Like you, you put the pressure on the Cowboys for them to try to pay you now. Uh, Kevin in North Carolina, you're on the Odd Couple. Fox Sports Radio, what's up, Kev? 
All right, we lost Kev. How about Marty? Marty in Kentucky. You're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. What's up, Rob and Aaron? How are you? What's up, Marty? And I'm great. And I, I, I've. This is one of the few uh, topics that has just got left me scratching my head because, uh, although I'm, a, I'm not a fan of the Cowboys and I dislike their fan base on a whole other level, I really like Dak Prescott. He's a good leader. He's got a great attitude. He's the kind of guy you want on your team. But uh, I, he's talent wise, he's not th- this kind of money. You know, type of guy, and I didn't even know if they'd give him the thirty million, especially with Cooper coming up and uh, the Zeke issue. And uh, right, I'm really, I'm really. You got so many opportunities to make other money when you play for the Dallas Cowboys because they're so popular. You get endorsements and whatnot. Um, mm-hmm. I, I just can't believe that he turned down thirty million a year to play with the Dallas Cowboys. I, I, yeah, I'm just shocked. No, I hear you, Marty. Thanks for the call. We appreciate it. But uh, you know. He feels like he could make more money. So so he can get more money, and he would be taking a step back from all the other quarterbacks who all have raised the bar as as these guys have signed. Now we break in, bring in our main man from the NFL Network and, of course, Sirius XM NFL radio host. His name is Cole Wright, if you want to get at him, at Cole Wright NFL. Welcome to the Odd Couple. What's happening, Cole? Rob, what's the word, man? Doing great. You know Aaron Torres? Always. Absolutely. AT, what's happening? What's up, Cole? Good to hear from you, man. So we want to we want to jump in on this. Uh the Dak Prescott. How surprised are you if the report is true that he turned down thirty million and his demand is now, from what we're hearing reportedly, forty million. So first Ooh. that he turned down thirty, he makes two million, and now he wants forty. What do you think? Well, I mean, what do they what do they always say? Uh, shoot for the stars and you land on the moon. So, I mean, if he's if he says if he really wants thirty six, then you know th- why not go ahead and ask for forty? But like I understand, like you said, he's he's only making two million right now. Yep. But if if you're a guy like Dak Prescott, you have to look. Oh, okay, what team do I play for? The, the Dallas Cowboys. What position do I play? Oh, yep. I'm a quarterback. Okay, the, playing quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys, no matter what time, place, person, whoever it is. No matter what the time frame it is, that's like playing shortstop for the Yankees. You know that that's that's that it's coveted that prestigious, role. Stages, no that, doubt. Exactly. That's that's that role that you know every kid that grows up in Texas wants to be the quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. And when there's a a cyclical process that's going on when it comes to quarterbacks being the highest paid players in the league, whether it's whether it's your boy Stat Padford, Rob, right. or whether right. it's Matt I'm... Ryan or whoever it may be, the next man up more times than not, usually is the highest paid guy or he's inside of that that highest paid guy, top three, top four, top five. And if I'm Dak Prescott, if all I'm saying to my agent is just, just show my numbers to, to Jerry and look at how they stack up versus Carson Wentz in Philadelphia. Because when you're winning, you winning the division two out of three years and you're winning games in the fourth quarter and you're in your stage in fourth quarter come from behind W's, I mean, the, the, the proof is in the pudding. It's, I'm, we're, and I'm not saying that – that Dak Prescott is 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 of these elite quarterbacks who makes this, who make this kind of money, but he's the next man up, and that's just the way it is. Like Mike Robinson said the other day on Total Access, you know James Jones and myself, we were doing pre and post game for the Cowboys and Forty Nineers game. He said the pay scale for quarterbacks clearly is broken, so it doesn't really matter who who the talent level or whatever it is. It's just right place. Right time, you're going to be the next guy who gets that Brinks truck rolled out for him. So why do uh, – this is the part that I don't understand. Why do the Cowboys have to fall in line with that thinking? Because from my perspective, nobody thinks of him as an elite quarterback. Nobody thinks of him as a guy that is worthy of being the highest paid quarterback in the league. And I'm not saying that he will end up being that way. But it's like, you know, it just doesn't make sense to me that the the Cowboys have to bend over backwards just because this is what the market says when statistically well, he hasn't done anything. That's true. But, Aaron, is is Matt Stafford the best quarterback in the league? No. And he never has no, but been. At, at, one, at one point, though, he was the highest paid but quarterback do you in the think, league. Do you no think disrespect quick, to my guy, Cole, Derek Carr. Was Derek Carr the best player quarterback Cole, in the league at one point? The, do you think that the Lions regret that decision at all to give Matt Stafford that money? I mean, I I don't see why they do. It's just it, it's you want to have at game. least. Well, that's true, but they hadn't been really solid w- with him before. They haven't, and they, won a, been, they haven't won a playoff game in a decade with Matthew Stafford, who was the first overall pick. 
I'm not, yeah. He well, never deserved that money, and especially when they had I mean, to I'm renew with you, I'm with you guys. I'm, I'm with you. Right. I'm not Thank saying you. that and any of them deserve all this cash. I'm just saying, like like Mike Rob said, it, it is, it is bro- it's a broken pay scale. The system is broken, and it's very cyclical. If you're that guy and you're the next man up, you know, if you're a quarterback and sitting in your rookie deal and, you know, you're – you're two years out. You're saying to yourself, okay, you know, the, carry the one, take away three. It's like, okay, I should be sitting fine when I sign my next deal. I think that's just what it is. But if you can manage to stay a starter and stay in line and, and not be, you know, towards the bottom half, like I think the one, one guy who we know would never have been in this conversation if he even would have been the next man up, no disrespect to Blake Bortles, but Blake Bortles, we wouldn't have been the next man up even if you were still the starter down there in Duval County. His name is Cole Wright from the NFL Network and, of course, Sirius XM NFL radio host. And uh, Cole, he's joining us here on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. Cole, the other thing uh, that came out, and I think that uh, Antonio Brown now, no matter what he does, people just have, like, get worked up about him. The helmet thing, and I, and I was on Undisputed today with Greg Jennings, who said he went through the same exact thing. When they told yep. him he could no longer use his helmet, he was comfortable with it. The new helmet seemed to take a little piece of his vision away. And people jumped on him because he followed a process to get a hearing and, and try to get his helmet or at least keep it. And now he's come out with a statement basically saying, okay, I lost the appeal and I'll, I'll, I'll work accordingly. Has, has, has people go crazy? Has people forgotten how good he is? and that he's just followed a process? I mean, it seems like people are so willing to jump on him every time he says anything. Yeah, I think that he's just he, – he's a, a – like, you know what? For the most part, what, like, just take, a, take this for instance. When was the last time you've ever seen anybody hate on a scrub or someone who wasn't good? Right. That's, I mean, that, that never happens. Like he, Antonio Brown last year led the league in, in, uh, in receiving touchdowns. Of course, they're going to find a reason to hate on him. He he's done this, he's done that, he's done things that all those haters have never done, by and large, for the most part. Right. So I mean, you, you're going to see a hater like that. Like, what's the, how, what's the phrase? A haters going to hate. That's exactly what it is. They're just looking for another reason to take away from, it, especially in Pittsburgh. And I mean, Pittsburgh Steelers fans is one of the best I get fan bases it, right. of them all. But when their guy leaves, they're a little bit salty because they sure would love to have Antonio Brown still back in Pittsburgh and playing like Antonio Brown. I mean, from when 15 touchdowns walks out your door, now you're sitting around and you're wondering, well, well how are we going to make up for those 15 touchdowns? Because I don't, I don't see any other guys on the roster right now, at least for what I've seen so far, who are going to do the same thing that Antonio Brown has done. And I just think that, you know, when you're a guy like A.B., you're going to attract haters. And that's, that's pretty much just just the, the 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 rules of the game, and that's that's where you're at right now. Especially when you do a little a little more than most guys would do. I mean, would, would we both agree? Would, would all three of us agree that Antonio Brown does a little bit more than DeAndre Hopkins? He does a little bit more than Julio Jones when it comes to being outspoken in the public yes. eye. So you want to be out there in the public eye. That, that's what comes along with it. Cole, we got about one minute left. Just really quick, the reaction from you, from your colleagues at NFL Network to Daniel Jones on Thursday. It was only one drive, but he did look good. Do you make anything of it, or was just this a guy in his first uh, experience playing a little above his head? Well, I mean, I, I saw Daniel Jeremiah, when he, one of our, uh, our guys over at the network. He tweeted out, like, don't be fooled. Preseason mm-hmm. is still the preseason. That's all that it is. It's preseason. But the day before... I saw a tweet. I don't know if it was from NBC Sports or who, whoever it was from, but either way, they they tweeted out Tom Brady in his first preseason game back in the day, first time ever being on the field, and he was just out there carving. So maybe it means nothing. Maybe it means everything. Sure. Who, who knows? I mean, if I'm Eli Manning, I know I'm going out there and I'm not letting any, I'm, like as long as I'm on the field, this job is not yours, young man. So I'm going out there and doing what I can to retain that position. But Daniel Jones, I'm sure he's going out there and. I mean, you know what he's there for. He's there to be a quarterback. He's not there to hold a clipboard. So ultimately and eventually this will be his job. Just how long or how soon will it be? No doubt about it. Hey, thanks for your insight. We appreciate it. Appreciate you. It's a Cole Wright, NFL Network and uh, Sirius XM NFL radio host. And uh, Cole, we'll uh, check back with you, buddy. Hey, it's the Odd Couple. I'm Chris. He is Rob. And we want to encourage all of you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's right. You know, you can listen to us on the radio. And now you can watch us as well 
and it's fun. No question about it. And remember, oh yeah!